This is a tutorial about the POP11 system which is part of POPLOG and the aim of this is to show how a teacher can set up a micro world to use for teaching artificial intelligence or something else. The main point is that whereas a previous tutorial showed how to use such a little micro world environment from the point of view of a student I'm now trying to show the same sort of thing from a different point of view and probably uh, and using slightly different programming from the one that was in the previous library so there is an earlier version on YouTube which is which shows about the river world in pop 11 this one's different so let me go to the part of the teach file which I'm accessing from inside the poplog editor ved which is implemented in pop 11 so I can put the cursor on the line I want which is the introduction type enter and G and it'll go there teachers themselves can easily produce such documentation files for the micro worlds or tutorials that they set up and then they can be put in a place where students can find them anyhow this tutorial which will have a video on YouTube which you're probably now watching explains how to use the pop 11 language including its pattern matcher and the simple database mechanism which is made up of lists of lists to create a micro world for teaching some aspect of general programming and uh, this is where the earlier tutorial can be found in its textual form and this is the YouTube video showing how it works Th that made use of a similar sort of micro world um, originally produced several decades ago in fact the original idea was by the late professor Max Clues when he was at Sussex University in the late 1970s and we were teaching with very much more restricted computing facilities than the ones we have now the version I'm now presenting the version of this micro world makes less use of general programming constructs for instance global variables and procedures and so on although the procedures are used and more use of a little database which is implemented simply as a list of lists in pop 11 in which knowledge about the world can be stored including both some general features of the micro world in question and the current state which of course can change while operations occur in the, on the micro world or when the agents in the micro world perform their actions independently this micro world um, like many others will have some agents of various types in and other objects in this case there's a boat a river three items that are on the bank of the river namely a fox a chicken and some grain and there's a man and uh, the man's task is to get the three items to the other bank using the boat and given a number of constraints one is that the boat can contain the man while he's rowing it across the river and only one of the three objects and the other constraints are that nothing must be left alone on the bank with something that it could eat uh, left alone without the man that is so the fox must not be left on a bank where the chicken is while the man's not there because the fox will eat the chicken and the chicken must not be left with the grain when the man's not there because the chicken will eat the grain what this illustrates is a very important point about program semantics computer programming languages have two kinds of semantics at least there's one kind which concerns entirely what's going on inside the computer when the program runs namely there are variables which change their values there are entities like representations of numbers list structures procedures starting stopping uh, control being transferred from one procedure to another and all of those are part of what could be called the internal semantics the internal semantics of the program refer to what's going on in the computer 
I want to contrast that with the external semantics of the program, which is whatever is whatever the program entities refer to outside the computer when they do refer to something outside the computer. Not all programs do. For instance, a program that's just monitoring processes going on within the computer in order to schedule them as part of an operating system might do, or merely monitoring files and um, the uses of the files by various programs, that would be entirely uh, semantics inside the computer. By semantics, I just mean w what the program means, what it refers to in the ordinary sense of the word mean in English. So in this example, we are using as our external semantics an imaginary portion of the world, although in some cases it might be a real portion of the world, which contains the objects that I was talking about, namely the man, the fox, chicken, grain, river and boat. And the river has two sides. The other components, apart from the river, do not have parts that concern us. Um, in some programs, objects are complex and have parts, and the parts are related, and the parts may change their relationships. But this is a simple toy example, a small micro-world. Uh, more complex micro-worlds might also be modeled in the same general sort of way. So, why should we want to give a program knowledge of this kind of world? Well, it might be controlling some processes going on in the world. It might be monitoring processes and therefore some user might need to interrogate the program to find out what has happened uh, or what's going on at the present time. Or the user might, be, might need to interrogate the program to find out what can be done or what needs to be done. These are all reasons why a program with external semantics might be useful. For now, I'm not going to worry about what the reasons are. I'm just going to talk about how, if you know what your external semantics are, then you may have to design your program so that it supports the kinds of distinctions between sorts of objects that are in the world and the sorts of actions. And the program must also respect the causal relationships. So if a fox eats a chicken in a micro world, then after that, the chicken doesn't exist, assuming we don't have access to the contents of the fox's belly. Uh, likewise, if something is on the river bank, and then the man puts it in the boat, then the previous relationship, that the item is on the river bank, will no longer hold. Instead, that item will be in the boat, and so on. And if an item is in the boat, and the boat is moved to the other side of the river, then that item will also be moved to the other side of the river. So things of that general sort need to be represented. These can be thought of as the causal relationships in the world. Okay, now the Pop11 database, I said, makes use of lists of lists and it makes v very important use of the POP11 pattern matcher, as we shall see. And the pattern matcher is introduced in other tutorials, uh, some of them on the YouTube uh, website where this one is. In POP11, uh, in the POPLOG system, the tutorial Teach Matches uh, gives an introduction. There are several other tutorials, and then the, the features of the matcher are summarized in Help Matches. Um, if I put the cursor in between Help and matches and type escape H, I get the help file in the other part of the editor window. I could use a multi-window display, but uh, that wouldn't be so suitable for this um, video. So the help matches file gives quite a lot of information about the formats that you can have, and um, I'm not going to um, go into that in detail now. I will use the matcher, but I'm not going to explain it, so I'll come back to this file. And there are more teach files which explain what the database is and uh, give lots and lots of examples. And then there's a help database file that summarizes that. And one of the features of the database, which I'm going to um, 
uh, illustrate uh, shortly is um, are, are the two commands for each and for every. I'm not going to use the which which command. Anyway, um, there are other files referenced in those, and there are more teach files. So let us consider what we might need to do in order to um, model this micro world. We want the pop 11 database to be available so we can put the cursor on that line where it says users database and type escape D and up at the top of the window it says done so that file has now been compiled. On another occasion one could do enter showlib database to see what's in that but for now I'm not going to do that. Now I have here produced a procedure to set up the initial world and there are many ways this could be done and I'm just illustrating it one way that it could be done. Um, the pop and database is held in a global variable so we can initially get rid of whatever was in it before by just assigning the empty list to the database. We can then ask the setup world procedure to add various things to the database and um, the order in which they added uh, should not make any difference to the running of the program as far as uh, this toy system is concerned. So we can s assume that there's a river bank, a, a river with two banks, a left bank and a right bank and initially we add that the boat is at the left bank, the chickens at the left bank, fox is at the left bank, grains at the left bank, the man's at the left bank and also that there are three transportable items so the fox is transportable which we represent as transportable fox and the chicken's transportable and the grain's transportable now one of the important things that a teacher or a student has to do is to decide how to represent information and uh, here I've given ways of representing things which are not the only ones. For example, we had for the relationship between the boat and its location and for the chicken, fox and so on and uh, their locations, we had a location word which was placed between the, the, uh, th the thing uh, that's located and the thing it's located at. Now instead we could have chosen a different uh, format which is uh, from in, in logical um, formalisms more common where we start with the relationship is at and then we'd have boat and left or we could have it the other way around contains left boat contains left chicken and so on now thinking about which of these many ways to represent the same facts is part of the technique of designing a program and which method is best will depend on what you want to do with the program. I have just chosen this method because it will be a little easier for beginners to read um, and it works. It can be made to work as you'll see below. So we will say boat is at left not is at boat left or contains left boat or whatever or occupies left boat. We don't even need to use English words for instance is at isn't an English word I just bind is and that and instead of boat I could have had G0095 and instead of left I could have XLBWW and for the rest of the operation of the program provided those changes were systematic it would make no difference. The POP11 system does not understand English but it does understand the structural relationships between the items in the program. What makes it able to represent something outside the program, namely to have external semantics, will be the kinds of processes that it supports. And that's what we will um, define through defining procedures. Anyway, here is the procedure to set things up. And if I type escape C, it's compiled. It says done up there. And that means I can run it. But in order to um, observe the consequences, I need another procedure to show the world state. So this procedure is a POP11 procedure which is slightly obscure, but I'll try to go through it um, slowly enough to make clear what's going on. The general idea is 
that uh, when the display world procedure runs it should paint a little picture made of text items and to show you the picture I will run it here so I'm going to obey the command set up world by putting the cursor on that command doing escape D the world is now set up those add commands will have created a database uh, of items which we can print out by using the name database followed by this thing called a pretty print arrow in pop11 equals equals greater than escape D and in the output.p window it shows the things that we added. In fact, it'll show them in the opposite order to the order in which they were added, but that doesn't make any difference. So it says here opposite left, right, opposite right, left, which I didn't talk about, but was in that setup procedure. It says what can eat what. The can eat chicken grain, can eat fox chicken. I could have put the can eat between the chicken and the grain, just chose to do it this way, and so on. So there is a database there. Now, the display world procedure, which we're going to go back to in a minute, will take the contents of the database and display them graphically, like this. I'm going to type escape D. Oops, I forgot to compile the procedure. I put the cursor in the procedure, escape C. Now it's compiled. It says done up there. Now I can run it. Let me just get rid of the um, error and warning messages in the output file. I mark them and gave the enter D command up there which went too fast for you to see but anyway I can now run the display world procedure and it creates this little list of information with square brackets starting the list square bracket ending the list and then it prints out that list uh, using the um, uh, something like that pretty print arrow with the two asterisks how do we get it to do that we've got to find out all the things that are on the left and put them in the list then we just add some hyphens and a backslash to indicate the left bank of the river then we indicate the boat with these structures left slash underscore and then underscore right forward slash uh, to make the boat and then later we can put things between there to indicate th things in the boat and these in underscores joined together just represent the, um, the river and then we can have the right bank with a right slash or forward slash and some hyphens corresponding to the backslash and hyphens on the left. So our pictorial representation is very simple and um, uh, we will see later how the pictorial representation changes when the database changes. But how do we create that pictorial representation? Well let's go back to display world. Um, we're going to go through the database collecting information and using it to to create a list which was which is printed out and then at the end it'll print out a new line um, it says print a string containing a new line but I could instead have said PR new line and that should work just as well um, the list ends here and then this thing prints it out now the list brackets have percent symbols so it ends with percent right bracket and it starts with left bracket percent and what that means is that the things between the percent are pop11 instructions for creating things to be left to go in the list so we have a collection of instructions based on what's in the database so if it says man is at left is in the database and present takes a list and checks whether that list is in the database. If so, then it puts the word man, note the double quote symbols here to mean it's putting the word man, otherwise man would have to be a variable with some value. And that is just left on a part of the popular memory called the stack and all the other things will be left on the stack and then the these brackets, the left list bracket and the right list bracket will be used to collect all the things on the stack into a list. Now we next have to see which of the transportable items are on the left bank and we use for every for that. For every takes a list of patterns and then it finds all the things that satisfy those patterns simultaneously and then you can do things with the things that are found. 
So uh, there are two items, two patterns here. One is transportable query item. Query item is a pattern element. It doesn't specify what something is, but it will find out what value that item can have using the internal semantics in the computer, which we interpret as external semantics. So if it finds something that's transportable, that will be bound to the variable item. And if that same thing bound to that variable item is in the database in an assertion of the form, item is at left, then if you can find that pair of, of assertions, it will save the item as something to go on the left. And as you'll see, at different stages in the running of the program, it'll find different items on the left. It then prints this thing, which in pop 11 word made of three hyphens and a left bracket to represent the left bank. Then it checks to see if the boat is at left is in the database. If so, it starts the beginning of the boat with that, and then it's later going to have a word representing the right-hand side of the boat, and then it'll use a slightly different database uh, a searching um, loop for every with just one list, one pattern in the list of patterns, just item is in boat. So every item that's in the boat will be recorded here and will go between these two things. And if there's nothing in the boat, uh, then we'll just have that followed by that, as we did earlier, as you saw. Then to represent the water, we just have this sequence of underscores. It doesn't look like a sequence of underscores, it looks like a continuous line, but that's just how it's displayed. And then we have to find what's the right-hand side. If the boat's on the right, then we start drawing it on the right. Um, and we end drawing it with that thing. And again, if there's anything in the boat, it goes between that and that using for every. Now, I'll just mention that these patterns have variables with question marks. That means the question marks can be given values. And we want the variable in the list to be treated as being the local variable which is declared up here using OVAR's item. And putting that exclamation mark by a piece of magic that in POP11 um, tells the POP11 compiler when this procedure is compiled that this isn't just an ordinary list of words or list of list of words because in an ordinary POP11 list that query would just be a word and the item would be a word and, and, and so on for all these things but by putting that exclamation mark we tell it that when it says query item or in some other context double query item that refers back to a variable that's been declared in the environment in which this exclamation mark occurs. So we, if there's any, if the thing's at the left bank, we do this lot. If it's at the right bank, we do this lot. In between, we do that, and then we do um, after we've drawn the picture of the right bank, we find out if there are any transportable items at the right bank. And then if the man's at the right bank, we put man in at the end. So we assemble that list of things, and then it gets printed out, followed by a new line. That's how Display World works. Um, so we can show what happens um, later on if the world changes. In fact, I can show now if I say uh, remove... boat is at left and I'm going to copy that and edit it to add boat is at right escape D both on the right, and I've removed it on the left. Um, I just tried to remove it again, and I got an error, attempt to remove a non-existent item. So, if you try to remove something that isn't there, you get that sort of error. Anyway, it's now at the right. We can check that by um, giving this database command again, and we will see both is at right, and it's nowhere in there that says the both is at left. So what happens if we now display the world? Come back to this window, put the cursor on display world, and escape D, and we see man, grain, chicken, fox, and the boats at the right. 
Now, normally that wouldn't be allowed to happen. We wouldn't allow the boat to move without the man in it, in this micro world. But we, as godlike creators of the micro world, can do our magic by just giving these pop 11 commands. When we re set up the program running, we don't allow magic, we only allow things that the laws of the world allow. So, if I restart setup world and then do display world again, we now get the original thing with everything on the left and the boat on the left bank and the boat not on the right bank. This shows some of what you can do with very cheap displays without expense, expensive graphics in order to set up um, a useful and powerful learning environment. Later it's going to be useful to have a program that reports errors, which we will call river mishaps. And uh, the pro when something is attempted and an error occurs, we will make the river mishap procedure run with a list of information and then print out mishap and then that list of information and then it'll uh, print out the world and then it'll run that display world program. So, for example, I can set up the world, where well we had that anyway, and we can say, um, suppose some procedure was looking for an elephant and it couldn't find it, then it might report that as an error by running the command river mishap with the message elephant missing. And this is what we would see in the output window if that happened. Sorry, I forgot to declare, I forgot to compile the river mishap thing. So I will get rid of that warning that said was declaring the variable and its procedure river mishap was not defined um, and uh, now run it after having compiled it which I did with escape C in there now escape D to run one line of command and what do we get it says mishap elephant missing the world and then it just prints out the things it was before so that's a very artificial way of generating an error message because there shouldn't be an elephant anyway. So it's not really a river mishap. It's not really something going wrong. It's just a demonstration of the mechanism working. Of course, that error message could have been er error procedure. The mishap procedure could have been defined to do something different. And in fact, POP11 has its own mishap procedure, which is more sophisticated than this. Uh, it shows all the procedures that are running when a mishap occurs, but for now I'm going to bypass that. Right. Now in our world we need to have some actions. And one of the actions is uh, done by the man, namely to put, in, put an item in the boat. Another action is to get into the boat. Another action is to cross the river while in the boat and that will take the river to the opposite bank from along with whatever's in the river uh, whatever's in the boat uh, another action is to get out of the boat and um, we're going to start by defining the put-in action now the only thing that can put something in the boat is the man but we have to have some tests for what the item is that the man is trying to put into the boat and we will have some local variables for uh, doing these tests. The first test is whether the man's trying to put itself in the boat. Um, and we'll use river mishap to say a man cannot put man in boat and use get in. And that's the procedure that will be defined later. So if I compile this put in procedure, which I'm going to do now, and um, perhaps go up, back up, try again, put in. I forgot, forgot to put the quotation marks around the word man. Now try. If I do that, it says mishap. Man cannot put man in boat. Use get in. And then it shows the world. Uh, so the world hasn't changed. Sorry about that little delay. It shows you that even the person who's written the program can occasionally, especially when giving a, a tutorial, uh, get confused about what needs to be done next. So that just shows, that illustrates how we can include in our put-in action tests for whether what's being attempted is permitted in the micro world. And the first test is that the man can't put the man in the boat. The second is that the item must be transportable. So we use the word, the procedure present and 
transportable and that little thing can be expressed as circumflex or hat or up arrow I call it up arrow, it's pointing up item and what that means is we take the value of the variable item to make a list so for instance if it was put in with the word fox double quotes we'd have to see if transportable fox is present in the database and if not present then we say we run river mishap saying cannot put non-transportable fox in boat so that's a test that the thing to be put in the boat must be one of the transportable things and you may remember that we had in our definition of um, uh, what's in the database that some things are transportable transportable fox transportable chicken transportable grain later we will use the other things like can eat and opposite so where were we? we're looking at the put in function put in procedure here and there's a test for whether something is transportable the item being put in is transportable if not river mishap produces a complaint we also have to check if the man is in the boat if the man's in the boat then he can't put a thing in the item can only put things I can't put the item in the boat can only put the item in the boat um, if the man is on the bank where the item is um, here we have item for the thing to be put in the boat now the next test is going to look for something else already in the boat so if there is something in the boat and this query thing is a variable and again we have the exclamation mark saying treat that as a variable thing was one of the local variables up here at the top of the procedure um, let's expand this window so you can see more of it at once Okay, I'll use the mouse cursor now so we've got as far as this condition if something is in the boat and the boat can only hold the man and one other thing then we get um, another mishap saying the thing now we have the up arrow thing which is whatever was found over there being in the boat so we cannot put the item which is not the thing found but the item that we're trying to put in the boat can be added to the boat so those are things that can block the action um, another requirement is that um, the man is at some place and the item to be put in is at the same place so again we have all present um, with man is at query place and the item is at the same place if that's true then we're nearly ready to say we can put the thing in but we have to check that the boat is also at that place and if the boat is at that place then we do what's needed namely we remove the item from that place we add items in boat we print out a little report that the item is now la loaded and then we can display the world which will have changed because there's something in the boat whereas it wasn't before if it's not the case that the boat is at the same place as the man and the item were so if that's not present then this lot does not get done and we have an else clause which says we're going to find where the boat is Elvar's new place and we look up that's another way of getting information from the database um, boat is at query new place and again the exclamation mark to say use query new place to refer back to a local variable and in the world the boat can't disappear so either it's at this place that we're trying for or it'll be at some other place and then we can say here yeah, the boat's at this other place man and we c and cannot put in the man at the place where the man is uh, can't put something into the item into the boat when the boat's at the other place and if it's not the case that the man is at the same place as the item is the item be put in then we have the last case that that 
something strange has happened, some unexpected, unknown failure. And whenever you have if clauses, you should always end with an else, to, ha to just in case something can happen that you haven't anticipated and doesn't fit all the conditions that you thought of. So now we can compile this put-in procedure, which I've now done, escape C, and we can test it. So I'm going to set up the world. We can display the world. We'll first try to put in an elephant. And it says, mishap cannot put non-transportable elephant in boat. Why does it say non-transportable? Because one of the first tests is for whether the item has been recorded in the database as a transportable item. And if it's not present, then we get this mishap message, cannot put non-transportable item, in this case elephant, in boat. So that's showing that the um, the tests work. We can try again, put in man, and we get mishap, man cannot put man in boat, use get in, which we haven't defined yet, and then it just shows the world with man, grain, chicken and fox on the left. What about put in fox? And we didn't get a mishap message, and now we have the world uh, sorry, that was the world before, and now it says fox loaded, and then it uh, paints the world as man, grain, and chicken on the left bank, the fox in the boat, and then nothing on the right bank. So the database has changed, as we can see by printing it out. We have some things unchanged, but um, we have... Um, What's happened to the box? We've got, ah, okay, it printed out up there for some reason, because I had been messing around in there. We had foxes in boat, which we didn't have before, and everything else is exactly as it was before. Just check that that's it. that is how it was printed out, how it should have been printed out, sorry. Database, right, foxes in boat, opposite left, right, etc. So, Let's have a command to take something out. Um, this also has to go through various tests. We have a number of variables as before. If the item is a man, then we say a man cannot take the man out of the boat, can only take something out. Instead, it should use the get out procedure, which we haven't defined yet. If the man is in the boat, then we have another mishap. The man in the boat cannot take anything out of the boat, whether it's in the boat or the other things in the boat or not. So we have to check that the man is on one of the banks, left bank or right bank, and the boat is at the left bank or right bank, uh, and that the thing we want to take out is in the boat. So first we check that the man is at a place and the boat is at a place. And um, if it's not the case that the man and the boat are at a place, then we're going to produce a river mishap. But in order to get the um, river mishap message, we're going to get some information to be printed in it. So we look up where the man is. We look up where the boat is. The boat's at another place, different from the man place. We can't just use the variable place here because if there's a not there, it means that the all present thing wasn't satisfied and therefore the variable place will not have been given a well-defined value. So we find where the man is, we find where the boat is, the other place, and we have river mishap, which is cannot take out man at place, boat at other place. And this comment says this situation should never occur. Why shouldn't it occur? Well, if only the man can move the boat, uh, then the boat must always be at the same place as the man. But when you've defined your procedures, you need to go through them to check that they never allow that situation to occur. And just in case you've got it wrong, you can put the test in for this situation. That will show you if you've misdesigned your program. Over here, we have uh, um, the final test, which is 
if the item to be taken out is not in the boat, so if not present item in boat, then we get a river mishap, items not in the boat, and the man cannot take it out. If all those tests fail, in other words, there's none of those uh, preconditions for failing is true, then we get to the else clause, we look up to see where the man is, we remove the item from the boat, we know the item must be in the boat because we've already checked that, and we add items at the same place as the man was. Remember the query means set the value according to what's in the database, so look up, looks in the database, and we find out the place where the man is, but when we have the this up arrow or hat, we use the value that was already given. So we remove whatever the item is that was given up here in the input to the procedure, and then we add the item is at, and we use the place that we got from that lookup, and then we display the world. So I type escape C to compile that takeout procedure and test it. We set up the world, display the world. It's going to come out in the other window. So there's the world after being set up. We try to take out the chicken, which we shouldn't be allowed to do because the chicken's not in the boat. We get mishap. Chicken not in boat, can't take it out, and then it prints out the world as it is. Try to take out the boat. Again, the boat's not in boat, can't take it out. Take out fox, not allowed. Take out man, not allowed. But if we put something in the boat first, let's try put in fox. Then it says fox loaded, man, grain, chicken on the left bank, and fox is in the boat. Now we try the takeout command, which I'm copying. I marked it and I'll copy it to here. I didn't have to copy it, but I thought it's just easier to see what's going on if I do. Take out fox, and we don't get any mishap, and it's re-displayed the world with the fox no longer in the boat, but over here. And we could have had a, um, a little command to record that the action occurs, so we could have fox, sorry, not fox, item unloaded to be printed out. So I've put that in there, I'll type escape C um, and we can go through the put in fox again and it says fox loaded, the fox is back in the boat over there. Come here, take out fox and this time it says fox unloaded and then it draws the world with the fox unloaded. Okay. So we're beginning to build up the mechanisms of our world uh, by changing things in the database subject to constraints defined by the laws of the world. We now have a procedure to put the man in and I'm not going to go through it in quite so much detail. Again, we can start with the definition giving the name of the procedure. This time there will be no inputs to the procedure because it's just an action that the man produces. Um, we find there's going to be place and another place. We do some tests. If the man is in the boat, then we have a mishap. You can't get out if you're already. You can't get in if you're already in. We find the place where the man is, and if the boat's at the place, then we perform the action by removing what's in the database the man's at, and adding the man to the boat. Display the world. But if we don't find that the boat's at the same place as we've got over there. Then, in theory, we should never get to this. Another question, can you prove that about your program? Um, but uh, if some mysterious thing's gone wrong, then lookup could show the boat's at some other place, and then we produce a mishap message. So we'll compile get in, escape C, set up the world, display the world. I'm going to clear the output window, it's got a bit full. Display the world again. Run get in. So the man is now 
shown over here in the boat and we can display the world uh, but I don't need to because it's already displayed um, we can define uh, notice we haven't yet done anything about the fact that the chickens on the same side of the grain and the man's not there and the fox is next to the chicken and the man's not there so we're later going to have to define a procedure to detect that and react by causing eating but first we'll have a procedure to get the man out and it uses the same general thing get out no inputs because the man just gets out and um, if the man isn't in the boat then he can't get out so we have a mishap otherwise we remove man is in the boat we look up what place the boat is at and then we put the man at that place and display the world so escape C and we type um, we've already done get in so we'll try get out and so the man is out we do get in he's in get out and so on now the procedure called check eat which is going to find out if anything edible is next to um, the thing that can eat it without the man to protect it so we define a procedure called check eat which takes no inputs it's just going to do a check and if it finds that some things get eaten it'll make a list of the things that get eaten and return that list so it starts off with an empty list of things eaten and if it doesn't if nothing gets eaten then that empty list will be the value that it produces at the end so to find out if anything can get eaten we first have to check what things can be eaten by what and we have to see if they're in the same place and we have to see if the man's not in that place so we have a variable for an eater we have a variable for the thing to be eaten we have a variable for the place and we use this for every construct for every is not a procedure it's a special looping construct and it starts for every and ends with end for every and it has for every and then some stuff over here and then do and the stuff in here will repeatedly find things out about the database and depending what it's found it will do some actions over here so we look to see is there some way of matching this variable eater and this variable eaten to the database such that the eater is at a place and the eaten is at the same place if if we find something two things at the same place where one's an eat and a thing that can be eaten by another then we see if the man is not there if the man is not there then we remove the eaten thing is at wherever it is I could have put up arrow place there but the equals sign will just remove whatever it is we don't have to bother um, to specify it and we report a disaster namely the eater has consumed the eaten and we add this eaten thing at the end of the list of items eaten which initially was the empty list to the items eaten and then go back and do this loop again. If it can find something else, another pair eater eaten at the same place, and um, with the man at that place, then that will also be dealt with. Um, and the thing will be reported. So, and if if nothing of that sort is found then uh, this procedure will just return an empty list of things eaten so compile it, escape C let's set up the world I'm going to clear the output window set up the world display the world, there it is and run check eat and it returns an empty list so no things can be eaten I now do get in so the man's in the boat and we have on the left fox can eat chicken, chicken can eat grain and it's been displayed so I won't redo the display word. now we run check eat and see what gets eaten and we get two mishap reports first is a disaster chicken has consumed the grain and now we only have chicken and fox and man 
And then we have another mishap disaster, foxes consume chicken. And we have fox and man, and the things eaten, this is printed out by this print arrow at the end of the command check heat, shows that the grain and the chicken have been eaten. Uh, we could, by magic, add the chicken to the right, add the grain to the right, and display the world. And now the grain and the chicken are at the right. And we could run check eat again. And what will happen? Well, the grain and the chicken are together, and there's no man there, so some more eating should happen. We run check eat, and we get mishap, disaster. The chicken has consumed the grain, and that's the world. Fox on the left bank, man in the boat, and chicken there and the thing eaten is the grain. In order to enable the whole problem of transport to be solved we need another procedure which allows the man to take the boat across the river when the man's in the boat with something or without something. So we define this cross river procedure um, which has two local variables, place and a new place and we look to see if all these things are present. So all present is another database procedure. It takes a list of lists. It's a bit like for every, uh, but it only does one check, whereas for every will repeatedly check to see if there are alternatives. So if it's all present, man is in the boat, man can only cross through the boat, and the boat's at some place, and then there's another place which is opposite the new place. You may remember that uh, when we defined the setup procedure, we had an opposite uh, specification. Let me just um, go to where set setup was defined. If I type f setup, that takes me to setup world. And we had in the database opposite right left and opposite left right. So I'll go back to where I was. Um, so if a man's in the boat, and the boat's at the place, and this place is opposite another place, then, to cross the river, we remove the boat is at that first place, add the boat is at the other place. We used queries to get the new place over here, using the place that was found for the boat. But we don't use a query, we use the up arrow to say, use that value, to be removed and we use the value when we add this thing versus at that and then we display the world. If these things are not all present, if it isn't the case that the man's in the boat, the boat's at some place and so on, then we'll get a an error message. It'll presumably occur because the man is not in the boat. Say the boat is not self propelling. So we test all that. Compile it, escape C, set up the world display the world, I'll clear the um, output window, display world, so the man's not in the boat, if I t run cross river escape D, we get mishap, the boat is not self-propelling, the man's not in the boat, but we can do get in, and now the man is in the boat, and the world's displayed, now we can do cross river, and we can see that the man's at the other side of the boat. Uh, the sorry, the man and the boat are the other side of the river. And we can get out, and the man's on the other bank. Um, then we can do check eat as before, and we have this disaster: the foxes consumed the chicken, and the chickens consumed the grain. And for now, I'm going to. Um, leave this. Uh, there are more things we can do. We can define some goals and uh, then this is a procedure to check whether the goals have been satisfied and there are various other things that we can include uh, but for now I will just leave this as a demonstration of how you can set up a micro world and how you can in a godlike fashion create the laws which constrain what sorts of things can happen under what conditions and then what the side effects will be when certain things happen. And then when you set that all up, you can give this micro world to your students and invite them to run programs to produce various things that happen in the, in the micro world. And um, 
Initially they can run the programs themselves and then later they can write programs to work out how to get things done where the program does the planning instead of the, stu instead of the student doing the planning. And those are steps that one goes through in teaching artificial intelligence to beginners. They first work out things for themselves and then they work out how to get the computer to work out those things like making a plan to cross the river with everything on the left bank transported to the right bank. Enough for now.